Well, we've got the rest of the water blocked in now. This was uh, just wet raw umber. Yellow ochre, white. Maybe not even white. Anyway, then we went to ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and some burnt sienna to keep it warmish. Then we did away with the yellow ochre, mostly, and did away with most of the burnt sienna to about here. And then right at the bottom, I just went in with oh, pretty much just burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, I guess. So now we'll jump into the sky. I know when you paint, you usually go from back to front, but uh, it's just the washing. And uh, actually, I don't think it matters too much on this painting. So we'll get started. We're going to start with some cobalt blue and raw umber. Then we'll probably use cobalt blue and raw umber again, but less blue because I'd like it to warm up a little bit. And I might even start to go into a little bit of mauve here and there. I might even add a little bit of purple. But that'll be on the painting. You won't see too much of that on the wash in. And we're going to have our light coming from back here in the distance. This is going to be our, our lighter area. And, I, and I'm, it's a big area. I'm going to need to, I haven't, I haven't uh, drawn it in, but I'm going to have a little bit of a design there. Maybe some, uh, the hint of a Varga coming down, you know, uh, from beneath the cloud. Just, you know, rain that, 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 that condenses and begins to fall from the cloud but the atmosphere is so dry in the lower reaches, lower altitudes, it just dries up, disappears. Has kind of a nice effect. A very beat up very well used. What is this? Number eight. Number eight flat brush. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm uh, my paint is fairly opaque. I don't want canvas showing through very much because. I'm trying to arrive at reasonably close to the colors that I'm going to want ultimately. Well, sorry, uh, lower value, but in the you know in the neighborhood of the colors, in the family of the colors that I'm going to want. Whoops! Spitting colors all over the place here. Dripping paint, messy boy. Get around the shoulder a little bit of the, of the canvas. That was a little bit thicker than I wanted, but it'll do. It'll do. Is that going to be enough? You know, I might even go a little further down along. Along this edge. And if this mass of cloud gets to ha this mass of cloud gets to have a baby or two, maybe this one should have a baby as well. We don't want to be unfair about things.
somebody had asked if uh, <clears throat> if I painted on a porch because of all the traffic. And you know, I can have actually long stretches of, of quiet. But when I turn the camera on, yeah, then the traffic seems to come for some reason. Funny how that works. Murphy's Law, I guess. Anyway, at the moment it seems alright. So I switched to another flat brush. This one is far less used. It's not brand new, but it's close to new. This is a number six. Yeah, and my, uh, my workspace here, my studio, is not far from what you would think would be a quiet road. And the window, the windows face the road and I would not survive very long with closed windows. I like the fresh air. So, that is why it is often very noisy. And believe me, wow, do I ever find it irritating sometimes. I know you guys are really forgiving about it. And I appreciate that. But still, it's just, I've been kind of spoiled most of my life. I've lived in very quiet places. But uh, we uh, live in a highly populated area now. And uh, for a multitude of reasons. The big one being we uh, we refuse to leave our children in... Uh, let me back that up a little bit. We refuse to leave our children in, public, in the public school system. So we put them in private school where they could actually get a reasonable education. And that, you know, they both graduated quite a while ago. But uh, now they have jobs and they live here, you know, they put down roots here. My wife still has family here, so it's not so easy to leave. And we live in arguably one of the most expensive places to live in Canada. So it's you're lucky if you can find a place to live to begin with. Never mind uh, never mind something that's isolated. That's very difficult when you've got this much uh, this much population around. And they're actually running pipeline through. So we're getting quite a few work trucks and what have you. Sometimes farm equipment because where I live here it's the farming community. Adjacent to high population. Okay, so warmed it up a little. It's a little lighter now. This is mostly raw umber and a bit of cold of, of cobalt blue and some white. I'm just going to scrub this in with the other brush and we'll carry on with the sky. Okay, well, next time we meet, I'm going to put some yellow ochre up here. A little bit of light coming from behind this cloud. And uh, probably feather it down to a little darker. I don't want very bright light. I don't want really high uh, chroma or value against this far shore. So we'll soften it as it gets down to the shore. We'll also soften the edges here and up here because I want more attention paid again to this area. And of course, when we lay some direct sunlight in places here, that's going to bring this whole area alive. Till next time, thanks for watching.